Coming up next, Frank and Mary here in Framingham with your guests, Grace O'Donnell and me, Art Bergeron. Our guest today is Kathy Devine from the Prescription Advantage Program at the Massachusetts Executive Office of Elder Affairs. Stay tuned. Welcome to this episode of Frank and Mary in Framingham. I'm Grace O'Donnell, Director of Elder Services. And I'm uh, her co-host, Art Bridgeron. Uh, my day job, I do elder law at Myrick O'Connell. There are 70 of us at Myrick. We're the biggest from outside of Boston. I am far away in Westboro, but this show is not about elder law. It is about my friends, Frank and Mary whose goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if you are like them, then you want to know how to stay in Framingham for the rest of your life. So the point of this show is to find the people that you need to know about and the programs that you need to know about in order to stay right here for the rest of your life. Grace O'Donnell, my wonderful co-host, knows everybody, and therefore she's the one who finds all the great people to come on the show. This is a really important one and a really timely one right now, so we're delighted. I think Grace once again, you've got another, you got another gem, you know, it's, it's a good thing we don't have to pay these people too much money, you know, because we keep finding great ones. Thank you, Arthur. Yes, this month we have Kathy Devine. She's the Director of Prescription Advantage Operations and Outreach. She'll share with us the value of signing on for the Prescription Advantage Program. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy, uh, for joining us. And of course, a great time to be talk talking to you, given the fact that it's Medicare time, that it's Medicare reauthorization time and all of that jazz. But Grace, you always have great questions to start. What do you got? Yeah. So, Kathy, people would be interested in knowing how Prescription Advantage is different from Medicare Part D or the Medicare Advantage plans. Yeah, Grace. You know, that's a great question to start with because pres Prescription Advantage, I think just because of the name, it often creates a lot of confusion and people think that Prescription Advantage is just another Medicare Part D plan or they think we're a Medicare Advantage plan because we share that, you know, that word in our name. But we're entirely different. Um, Prescription Advantage is what we refer to as a state-sponsored pharmacy assistance program. So that means that this is a program that's sponsored through the state of Massachusetts. And it does not replace what people may have for their prescription drug coverage. Um, so if somebody has a Medicare Part D plan or if they have a Medicare Advantage plan, Prescription Advantage works with it. So it doesn't replace it, but it, it does act more as a supplement. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, who can apply for a Prescription Advantage? Well, that with Prescription Advantage, um, again, we have benefits for a number of different people, depending on what their situation is. Um, so I, I sometimes think of it as Prescription Advantage having three programs in one. Um, we have benefits, first of all, for people who are under age 65 with a disability. And with um, Prescription Advantage, we would be able to provide them with primary prescription drug coverage if they don't have anything else. But at the point when they do become eligible for Medicare, then we could supplement their Medicare. We also have benefits for people who are age 65 and over and not eligible for Medicare. And that's something that I often hear people say, I, I thought once you turn 65, everybody gets Medicare. Um, but that's not necessarily the case because el the eligibility for Medicare is going to deter be determined by how many years you worked and paid into Social Security. So, and I know, as you know, we have a number of people, older adults, who may have moved to this country later in life. You know, it could be because their children were here and 
they came to join them. Um, and even if they were working, they, by the, when they were 65, they may not have worked long enough to be eligible for Medicare. So that, just, you know, right then, they're not eligible for a Medicare prescription drug plan, but Prescription Advantage can provide those folks with pres uh, prescription drug coverage. Wow, that, that's a really important distinction. Yeah, to it is. A, a, it's a segment of our population that people don't realize that, you know, we have, there are benefits a bit available, but sometimes they, they just really don't know how to access them. Right, right. And are there income limits to people on Prescription Advantage? There are. Okay. And for people who are eligible for Medicare, so those would be our people age 65 and over, eligible for Medicare, which is sort of our, my third bucket of people. Um, but there are income limits. But I do have to say our income limits are quite generous. For an, a single person, it goes as high as $63,000. Oh. Okay. And for a married couple, it's eighty-six thousand oh, dollars. So those are those are high enough for, for the. So I'm 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 seventy, and all my client, my median client age is seventy-four, and I just about never see those kinds of numbers. You see people with assets, and so they're they're so often thinking they're excluded from all these programs because of assets. Exactly. But in terms of income, that's a those that's are big numbers. They are big, and this is why people, like you said, people will often disqualify themselves. They say, well, this is a state-sponsored program. I, I would never qualify. You know, the thing is, depending on what a person's income is, uh, we have different membership categories. Each category has a range of income, so it's almost like benefits are on a sliding scale based on what a person's income is. Mm -hmm. But another thing that's going to surprise you, we don't count assets. Oh, we okay. only look at gross annual income. And some, again, it's something that, you know, people will say, well, you know, I have a little, I have a savings account, you know, the, the little rainy day fund that we all try to have some money put aside. Um, but that's, that's fine. That's an asset. We don't look at that. Okay. Um, if somebody owns a home, you know, we don't, the home that they live in, we're not looking at that either. Okay. Uh, for people who have a Medicare prescription drug program, how does Prescription Advantage work with that? Well, this is where Prescription Advantage can really help a lot of people. Because if you have a Medicare prescription drug plan, you've probably heard of the donut hole. Yeah. 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 Being at the senior center, you know, people hear that term all the time. And the donut hole, this is a gap in the Medicare prescription drug coverage. So it doesn't matter what plan a person has. You know, in Massachusetts, we there's probably about 25 different choices of a Medicare plan. And they all vary in, you know, the, the cost of the premium, what their co-pays are, what their formularies are. You know, they're all different. But the one thing that they do all have in common is that they do all have this coverage gap. And I'd like to just take a couple of minutes to explain how people reach that gap because it's something that I, I often hear people say, I would never reach it because I only take one prescription or maybe two prescriptions. I'm supposed to know this as an elder law attorney. I've never figured this out. So this is very exciting. This well, I'm so happy that I can teach you yes. something too, because what drives people, what gets them to the point where they reach the coverage gap is the total retail cost of the prescription. So every January 1st, it starts a new Medicare plan year. And from the very first prescription a person gets filled, their plan is keeping track of what was the retail cost of that drug. Now, the individual may have just paid a $10 copay, but, you know, what did, their, what did their plan pay? What did their Part D plan pay? So if you add the two together, you, you know, you'll come up to the retail cost. So with every prescription that's being filled, that total cost is being accumulated. And if during the year, if that cost were to reach 
total cost reached $4,020. That's the point where somebody now reaches the coverage gap. So I think, um, and I know I'm very guilty of this, I don't keep track, I keep track of what was the cost of that prescription? Usually all I care about is what are they charging me? Um, but you know, if we all stopped and looked at the receipt that comes with, you know, that gets stapled to the bag, in the smallest print possible, <laughs> you will find the retail cost. So let's, you know, think of something like an inhaler. Um, you know, a lot of people use inhalers, and I have seen the retail cost of inhalers range anywhere from four hundred dollars to twelve hundred dollars. They can be so expensive. And if somebody was getting that four hundred dollar inhaler fill, you know, refilled every month, you know, that's adding up four hundred, eight hundred, twelve hundred as the year goes on. And then you add in a few other prescriptions on top of that, you can see how it may not take that long before somebody reaches the coverage gap. So what happens then? Somebody reaches the gap. Now, instead of paying what they were paying for a copay, let's say they were paying $50, a $50 copay for that inhaler. They reach the coverage gap. They're now responsible for 25% of the retail cost of the medication. Ah. So that Until copay just doubled. It just went, 50 to, went from $50 to $100. And can you imagine if they had the, the $1,000 inhaler? Mm. And now standing there with the $50 in their hand, only to hear that'll be $250. Right. So prescription advantage, this is where prescription advantage can help. And at the point where people reach that coverage gap, Depending on, again, I have to back up a little because depending on what the person's income is, and I'm just going to say if somebody's income, if a single person, if their income is below $38,280, or if a married couple, if their income is below um, 57000 I'm sorry, $51,720, Okay, at those income levels, they're going to have coverage in the donut hole. Okay, so their copay, a person's copay for that inhaler, would be either eighteen dollars or thirty dollars. It depends on where they fall in that sliding scale. But can you imagine? You know, you're standing at the pharmacy to hear that'll be a hundred dollars. When, as a prescription advantage member, that $100 copay is going to be sent directly to prescription advantage, and we tell the pharmacy, charge the customer $18. So, right there, that's an $82 savings with just one mm -hmm. prescription. You know, and if they were at an income level where their copay was $30, that's still a $70 savings. That's, that's a huge savings. It's constant. It's like every week or every it month. Is. So that you're, you're taking these numbers and you may be multiplying by 50, you know, if it's every week or something. Right. Now, can, can you, you, you may be about to get this, but now I'm getting all excited. What's, I assume, because it's a donut hole, that at some point you fill the hole. So that at some point, and I would assume that based on the, your description, that it's based on once you get to some kind of other number in terms of total co retail cost. Yeah, that's true. And I believe that number is somewhere around the retail cost is up to now six dollars $6,000. People can come out of the gap. And then when they do, um, their copay would be 15%. Um, but again, Prescription advantage is still going to help to lower those copays. So I think so even when they're on the other end of the donut hole, their 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 copay is still higher than it was it before could be. they got to it. Oh wow! Yeah, it could be. So mm -hmm. that's where you know prescription advantage is still going to provide assistance right through the end of the year, and then come January, you know we. 
again, we start a new Medicare plan year and everything just, we wipe the slates clean and we start all over again. But people reach the coverage gap as early as January, you know, depending on what prescriptions they're taking, what the costs are. You know, I tend to use an inhalers as an example because it's such a commonly used um, prescription drug, but also insulin, mm-hmm. which the cost of insulin has tripled yeah. with over the last couple of years, and which means people's copays have tripled and they're reaching, mm-hmm. and they're also reaching the donut hole that much quicker. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, can I ask her one more question? I know you've got a bunch yeah. of other stuff, but and, you know now it's it's this is really fat. This is really wonderful. Um, so is I know that everything else the clock runs January to January, and and there's an application deadline because you know Grace is going through it now with 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 Medicare the re up. Right. So so with Prescription Advantage, is there a is there a time that you need to apply for the following year? Is there a you know there is, is not. We have what we call a continuous open enrollment. People can apply for prescription advantage at any point during the year, um, which oftentimes we find people are applying quickly because, you know, at points where they realize they were just about to reach that coverage gap. And then um, uh, they are not uh, required to reapply every year. So, which is a nice which is the nice thing with prescription advantage is that. So Kathy, once one prescription applies, they stay on prescription advantage? Yes. Yeah. And what we do is we just, we tell our members, look at if there's any change in your, you know, your situation, your financial situation, sometimes there's a spouse that may have been working that decided, well, I'm going to give up a part-time job. Um, Okay, so that has changed their income. It may put them into a different income category. And we do follow up with members every couple of years for like a redetermination to make sure that they are in the correct membership category. But that is something that when when a person does apply, because we have an income-based program, uh, we do ask for proof of income. And you know, it's usually a copy of their federal income tax returns if they still file in income taxes, or it could just be like if they're 1099 from their Social Security, whatever it is that they have for income. And um, so if I sign up for prescription insurance, can I change the Medicare Advantage program that I'm in? Does that allow that? Somehow. Ah, great question again, Grace, because this is like, some people think this is like a little hidden gem of the Prescription Advantage Program. Um, you know, Medicare has their annual open enrollment period every year. It starts October 15th. It runs through December 7th. Um, you know, we always encourage people to make sure you check your plan because they make changes. And sometimes... People don't make, you know, they don't check. They're comfortable with with what they have, and they say, I'm going to keep it. And then January comes, and they realize, oh, my gosh, my plan made all of these changes, and what worked for me last year is not working for me this year. As a Prescription Advantage member, our members are allowed one additional time a year that they can change their Medicare plan outside of Medicare's enrollment. So if somebody found in January or February that they should have made a change and they didn't, well, they still have a chance. They can do that. They don't have to, um, you know, they don't have to stay in a plan that's not working for them for the remainder of the year. But but if I hadn't chosen prescription advantage, I would be stuck with the plan I chose? You would be stuck. For the whole year. And when you think of things that can happen, because plans, and I don't know why, but they are allowed over the course of the year to make changes to their formulary, mm-hmm. where they can remove certain prescriptions from their formulary, So, which means they're not covered anymore. Yeah. And if somebody is still taking that prescription, now they would have to pay full price. But Prescription Advantage is now giving them an opportunity to find another prescription drug plan that does cover all of their medications. Mm. Wow, that's great. Yeah. 
And so for some people, the prescription advantage itself is free. And for other people, they pay an amount based on their income. That's right. Okay. okay. The, the folks who are at our higher income level, okay, in our highest benef- uh, membership category, there is a $200 annual enrollment fee. Okay. Um, that's the only time that there is a charge for prescription advantage. So that would be anybody whose income, let's say if it's a single person, if their income is between that $38,280 through the $63,000, okay, if they fall within that range, they would be charged the $200 annual enrollment fee. But this is something that, you know, prescription advantage our customer service will go over with people. Um, it's a, you know, just a phone call away. And I'm going to give you that phone number now where it's on my mind. Um, it's toll free. It's an eight, you know, eight one eight hundred two four three four six three six. Okay, and I'll repeat that. It's one eight hundred two four three four six three six. And our customer service can answer any questions that people may have. You know, people always have questions about, well, what does count as income? Does, you know, does this count or something? Does that count? And they'll go over all of that with them. Um, They'll also explain the application process, which we actually have three different ways a person can apply. Uh They can, um, when they're talking to, to a customer service rep, we can send them an applic- a paper application form in the mail. And this is, I know this sounds like an oxymoron to say that this is an easy government form. <laughs> it is. It's only like three pages. And it's all, in, it's just information about the individual. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's very simple to fill out. Um, we can send them the paper form, or also we will offer to do an application right over the phone. Mm-hmm. So if somebody's calling, they're getting all their questions answered, you know, we would say, you know, if you have the time, we can do this 10 minutes, we can do the application right over the phone. We also have a website, and our website is www.prescriptionadvantageMA.org. Okay. Great. And on our app, um, on our website, we have an online application. So if somebody feels comfortable, they're you know computer savvy. They say, "I can do this myself," and just data enter their application. They can do that, or we have all of our application forms online, which they can just download a, a form. Okay. So a number of different ways: paper online, by phone, um, but the important thing is to do it. Grace, can I, just, can, can I just add something? So for the people who are watching and they're seeing Kathy Devine and they're saying, this doesn't look anything like my stereotype of the kind of government, bureaucrat, grumpy, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of these people at Elder Affairs, you know, just like Grace O'Donnell and other people at the council. Absolutely. You, People don't go, go get those jobs because they want to be grumpy. They just don't, right? And so, and so if you're just concerned about this, these are all folks, these are your tax dollars at work, and they're, try, they're genuinely trying to help you out, you know? I mean, without, without being disparaging, it's not like you're calling mass health, you know? It's not like you're calling one of those really big, oh, my God, you know? These people really want to help you. And they're not, you know, they, they want to help you get through the form and get to yes, not get to no, you know. And, and it's just so important. And so don't, as, as Kathy said, don't say no to yourself on this stuff. This is big money. And, and, and you know, you, you may know on, off, off the top that next year you're going to have a lot of drug needs because you have a lot now. But it may get worse, you know. And so to be on the safe side, you know, it may, you may think that the donut hole is far away until it's not because all of a sudden you need something. You know, I just make that as an observation, Grace. Thank you for saying that because I, that's something that I say to people that you, that could just be one prescription away. You just haven't been prescribed that prescription yet, but you could be. And again, because human nature is to, you know, that we don't, 
look at those receipts to see what did that prescription really cost. Um, it's, it's you're all going to start doing that now. I know you are because, and you're going to be amazed uh, because when you paid. You know, when you pay a $5 copay, you just assume, well, this was an inexpensive medication. And then you could look at it and say, that was an $80 medication. And then, then you'll never complain about paying those premiums again. <laughs> so now, Grace, I talked too much. And so I bet you had other questions. And we're getting nope. close to the end. Nope, thank you, Kath. Kathy answered all of the questions. And it sounds to me Oh, like I'm so glad. It sounds like there was no disadvantage to signing on for prescription advantage. No, there, there absolutely isn't. And people, you know, as we said, they sh should do it or just, you know, call prescription advantage, find out where do I fall in all of this? What, how would this work for me? Exactly. Exactly. How would it work for me? And they're going to tell you, and they're, and they're, and they're, they're all like her. There's just a million of them. They're all cat friendly. So, Grace, thanks. Thanks for doing this. This is you keep doing this. You get these gems, you know, of people with just great information. And maybe it's because of you, but they're always cheery when they're here. Uh, Kathy, it's, it's just wonderful. Just wonderful. Oh, thank wonderful. you. But folks, thank you very much. This is the season to be thinking about this stuff. You know, you got all your other forms out. You're thinking about Medicare D, blah, blah, blah. Talk to these people. This could really help you. Uh, so thank you very much, Grace, for being willing to do this, right? And thank you, Kathy. And folks, we'll look forward to seeing you again on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Framingham. Thank you.